Hey everyone, I'm JR, and this is one of Mike's mini history lessons. With the recent news of President Trump being diagnosed with COVID and being over 70, which places him in the high-risk category of people who contract the virus, many have asked what would happen if President Trump somehow became unable to fulfill his duties. Now, the president says he has recovered and is feeling much better, but the question still remains, so we'll address it here in this week's lesson. Let's look back into history to get some answers. This particular situation is untested and unprecedented. What happens if President Trump is incapacitated before the election? What happens to the election or the results? Well, let's start with the 25th Amendment, which states what to do if the president cannot fulfill his role. It states that duties go to the vice president. Section 3 of the 25th Amendment states, if the president makes a declaration himself that he is unable to perform his duties, then the vice president becomes acting president until the president can return to his role, most commonly used when presidents have surgery. Both Reagan and Bush had their VPs take over due to medical surgery. So if Trump declared himself disabled, Pence would be acting president. The vice president at that moment can no longer be head of the Senate, and the Senate would pick someone to fulfill that role in the interim. Section 4 of the 25th Amendment states that if the president is unable or unwilling to declare himself ill or disabled, and the vice president or cabinet feel he is unable to serve, they can, by majority vote, declare the president as unfit. In that moment, the vice president becomes acting president. The president can put in writing a challenge to that ruling, and then Congress can decide. Two-thirds of Congress would need to vote that the president is unfit in order to remove him. If this does not happen within 25 days, the president takes back control. If the president dies in office, the vice president takes over. We've seen this before in American history, most famously with the assassination of John F. Kennedy. But... There is no law regarding what happens if a presidential candidate dies before the election. The Democratic Party law requires DNC members to vote on a new ticket if a candidate dies. The Republican Party rules are that three members from each state or territory vote on a new candidate. Mike Pence in this situation would make the most sense, but they're not required to do so. This happened when the Democrats replaced a vice presidential pick in the 1980s after he resigned in July. So states finalize ballots and have laws for deadlines for when parties can finalize candidates. Most states' deadlines are September or August. Too late to change it. When someone runs for Congress and dies after the deadline, they count the votes and consider the dead person as a winner if they get more votes. Upon winning, the dead person creates a vacant seat which in most states means the governor appoints someone to fill the spot. Mel Carnahan was elected to the Senate in Missouri 38 days after he died. He died after the deadline. His death led to a vacancy, which meant the state governor appointed a senator to replace him. But the office of president can't be filled this way. So, what if the president dies before the election? Well, let's use this election as a hypothetical example. One option is the Electoral College. It directly votes for the president and is not at all bound by voters' wills in the general election in every state. That probably wouldn't go over well. More realistically, if the president dies, then vice president takes over and would most likely lead the ticket. In this case, that would be Mike Pence. If Pence won, then he just gets sworn in again on January 20th. If Biden won, then Pence would be president until the 20th, and then Biden would take over. If Trump resigned due to illness, then Pence was sworn in, but the Electoral College picked Trump, then yes, Trump could conceivably be sworn in another term. This would also lead to a very gray area of if it counts as two consecutive terms or not. Either way, the president can't serve more than 10 years if he fills a partial term taken over from a previous president. And one could assume the 10-year hard limit would stop Trump from running for a third term if he argued against it not being two consecutive terms. Electors in most states say they must vote for the party's replacement, and other states say the candidate on the ballot. 
this comes down to state law. Some states have banned voting for dead candidates, which makes the most sense if you really think about it. If the winner dies after the election, but before the electoral college vote in December, then they vote on the new candidate the parties pick. On January 6th, Congress certifies the general election vote. The 12th Amendment says if the president-elect dies, the vice president-elect becomes president. If there is no agreement on who is president-elect, then the House of Representatives votes on January 20th for the president. This also applies to the scenario in which no candidate wins the majority of the Electoral College. They must choose from the top three vote-getters. This would obviously become very political. If one of the candidates was dead, then one could assume the living candidate would win. If the person dies after Congress certifies the vote, then the rules of secession take over and the vice president-elect becomes president. And I think that covers all the scenarios. Or at least that's the lesson you would get if Mike was your history teacher. 